Welcome to the Root of Power podcast, where I teach you how to chase your joy, find alignment, and create a life and a business that you love using actionable methods, interviews, and inspiring stories from people who know that true freedom is found within. I'm your host, your always hype woman and sometimes ass kicker, Amanda Chills, and I am so proud of you for choosing to step into your power. Come along, we've got dreams to build. podcast fam and welcome to this week's episode. We are going to talk about something near and dear to my heart, which is self-abandonment. And we're going to be talking about the opposite, which is showing up for yourself. Now, self-abandonment is something that I talk to a lot of clients about both in the therapy, wellness coaching, and in the business coaching realm. So I thought, hey, self, (laughs) it would be a good idea to do a podcast episode about this. Um, So we're going to talk about what self-abandoning is and the problems that it creates and probably why you are self-abandoning. Now, I can only guess because I don't know your specific situation, but I will talk to you about some of the things that I see. Self-abandonment is something that I am teaching in my course on overcoming people-pleasing called Becoming Light. So by the time this episode airs, that course is live. It is evergreen, meaning it is available all year round, but I only launch it a few times a year. And whenever I'm in an active launch cycle, then you get some really cool bonuses. Um, So this course is going to walk you through what people pleasing is, how it shows up, where it comes from, and specific step-by-step processes to overcome it that I walk my clients through. So You don't have to pay me hundreds of dollars, sometimes in the thousands, depending on how long I'm seeing them. You get it in a course. Um, So if you are interested in that, amazing. I literally built it for you. You can go to my website, livemyhappyhealth.com slash becoming light. That is going to take you to the page where it explains everything that you're going to get and you can purchase it from there. And if you are in it, shoot me a message. Let me know how you like it. I will continually take your feedback and use it to improve the course. So if you are listening to this episode, you would probably benefit from this course. So we're going to walk through one of the things, self-abandonment that I teach and let's party. Okay. So first of all, what is self-abandonment? Well, it <laughs> it's essentially what it sounds like. It is where you abandon yourself, meaning you go against your needs, you go against what is best for you, you do things you don't want to do, you're outside of your integrity. It encompasses kind of a lot of things. And we do this because we are afraid people won't like us if we say no, if we tell them that we can't do it. If we tell them that we don't actually like something that we've pretended to like for a really long time. So in order to keep a relationship, we abandon who we are, what we need, what we stand for. You can find this in, I see it a lot with my female clients who abandon their values to keep a partner. And I'm going to use keep a partner very loosely because someone who benefits from you being outside of your integrity is a shit bag. I will die on that hill. You deserve a partner who helps you live in your integrity, even if it doesn't necessarily benefit them. That is ideally where we're standing. So if you have a partner who you have to say yes when you want to say no, who you show up for, but they never show up for you, who... You abandon your needs and your wants. Let's say you very, very, very much want children. You're like, I've always wanted to be a parent. I've always wanted to be a mom or a dad. Um, but my partner doesn't want them. So you know what? It's really, it's really okay. Like, I think I could go without children for the rest of my life, even though I've wanted them for my entire life and all I want is to be a parent. I like, I really think it would be okay. I want you to think about that, okay? 
that's not okay. That's self-abandoning. Or you're staying in a job where you know you're not being treated well, but you're too afraid to look for another job. I could never get something better. Well, you're going to prove that right if you don't even try. And if you go back a couple episodes, there is an episode about how you prove your beliefs right at any cost. So that is a really good companion episode to this one. Um, That one was pretty recent, so you should be able to find it. It can also look like not going to school if that's something that you want to do. You abandon your needs and your wants because you're afraid. Now we can do it for other people or we can do it because we're just afraid to do something. And this shows up so, so, so much in a personal life, but it shows up so much in a business aspect as well. Not selling the thing that you want to sell because you're afraid people won't buy it. Not saying no to really difficult, horrible (laughs) clients because you're afraid that another one is never going to come your way. Um, Working way, way, way too many hours when you know you're burned out and suffering because of that. All of these are self-abandonment. So it's basically looking at what you know you need and going, nah, fuck that. (laughs) I'm just going to suffer instead because that's what I've always done. Now, if this resonates with you, I'm not saying this to shame you or to judge you or to tell you that you're bad at life, okay? I'm saying it to you so that we can get some awareness and then we can fix the problem. So hang on, we're going to get a little more into what it looks like and the pattern. So it is a pattern of putting other people's needs and wants above your own. This causes you to stay in toxic, unhealthy, imbalanced relationships. And not every relationship that you self-abandon for is going to be super toxic. It may just be imbalanced. Again, if the person you're in a relationship with And this can include a job, a business relationship, a partnership, a customer-client relationship. If they benefit from you not setting boundaries, from you not taking care of yourself, from you not prioritizing yourself, that is not healthy. That is not okay. You are self-abandoning. And we're only going to stay there longer until we learn to say, hey, actually, this is not for me, which... There are tons of other episodes and I talk about how to set boundaries. So find one of those. We just, I love when we, when I get to the point where I have such a volume of episodes, I like, I can connect them. Um, So we love that. So it will lead to resentment in all of your relationships. If you don't hate that partner, that parent, that client now, you're going to. (laughs) I promise you, you're going to. Because when you self-abandon, you're not taking care of yourself. And if you're not taking care of yourself, and this is your job, it is your job as an adult to take care of yourself, then you're going to be real pissed off about it. And you're going to be like, damn, why am I always mad at this person? Perhaps they're terrible. Maybe. There can be many reasons we're mad at someone. Or perhaps you're self-abandoning. It leads to a lot of anger. It also makes your relationships inauthentic because you're not showing up as who you fully are. And you deserve relationships where they actually see you and like you for who you are. But if you're self-abandoning to keep this relationship, they can't do that. So then naturally you feel lonely, you feel invalidated, and you feel insecure in all of your relationships. Self-abandonment can also look like denying your own needs to intentionally make your life more difficult or to punish yourself. I had a client a while ago who was doing this. They've healed from it, thank goodness. But they were really taking on extra shifts. They were saying yes to things. They were doing a lot, a lot, a lot of things. And they told me, well, I think I deserve it because I'm bad. And I'm just like, oh, damn. We got to heal that. You don't have to punish yourself because you think you don't deserve basic kindness. And if other people deserve basic kindness, guess what? Your people, you also deserve basic kindness, but it's very hard to give it to ourselves. I know. This is why we're talking about this. So if you are punishing yourself, if you're intentionally making your life more difficult because you think you don't deserve to be happy or you don't deserve nice things, then 
we need to start rewiring that. And again, my course is definitely for you. Okay, I'm going to walk you step by step through that process on how to do it. So this is going to cause depression. 100% is going to cause depression because you're literally making your life miserable. You cannot be happy in that space. It's going to cause anxiety because you are believing that you deserve bad things, that you deserve to be punished. And I would ask yourself where that paradigm came from. I see that a lot in people who grew up in the church or have religious trauma or very, very, very strict controlling parents. It is going to cause low self-worth and low self-confidence. And I want you to think about why. If you are always punishing yourself, and most people who do this never reward themselves, they just are always in this cycle of punishment, then what you're telling yourself is you're always bad. You're never going to be good enough. That is a one-way ticket to I hate myself town. It is a one-way ticket. And you're never going to come out of there. Because you keep proving to yourself through your actions the belief that you have that says you don't deserve kindness, growth, compassion, respect. All you deserve is punishment. All you deserve is bad things. All you deserve is to suffer. You're never going to feel good about yourself doing that. So if one of your goals is to feel more confident, we have to get out of this cycle of self-punishment. It is going to cause you to hate yourself. Because again, all you're doing is treating yourself like garbage. All you're doing is telling yourself that you are worthless and you are bad and you deserve punishment 24-7 and you don't. You don't. I don't care what you've done. Nobody deserves to be punished 24-7. That's not real. And it makes damn sure that your needs don't get met because remember back to the pattern, we're denying our needs to meet other people's wants or to punish ourselves. So either way, your needs are not getting met and life feels about a thousand times heavier and a thousand times harder than it needs to be. Life can be really quite easy when you get the simple things right, when you show up for yourself. It looks like not trusting your own instincts and intuition. I cannot tell you the amount of mental gymnastics People have to do, and I don't need to tell you because if you're listening to this episode, I promise you, you already know, okay? If it's like, you know those Spartan races that are like 12 miles of obstacles? That's what you have to do multiple times a day, probably hundreds of times a day to convince yourself that you are doing the right thing by self-abandoning. You know internally that you're not doing the right thing that's why it feels like shit okay if you're making a decision and that decision feels bad it is the wrong decision but because you are not trusting your instincts and your intuition you're doing all these friggin' spartan race mental gymnastics obstacle courses and you're muddy and by the way it's like there's bears so it's like a spartan race on friggin' steroids and there's bears and there's people that want to kill you like it's not like oh I just I just do a cartwheel in a field like no you're doing like hella shit because you're not listening to your intuition you're not listening to yourself but when you self-abandon it goes against what you know to be good you don't show up for yourself which naturally means you can't hear your body when it's trying to scream at you eventually it will shut you down Okay, this is where depression and anxiety come in. I have a lot of people who tell me, Amanda, I'm so depressed I can't get out of bed. Which, fair, totally looks like depression. But what it actually is, is their body shutting them down. Okay, if you're not going to listen to a whisper, I promise you it will scream. I promise you it will scream. It is always going to get louder and louder and louder and worse and worse and worse until you stop. And sometimes that stop looks like laying in bed for three days because you can't get up. This can be because of self-abandonment. It may be because of other things. I'm not, depra- I'm not saying that all depression is because of self-abandonment. Don't mince my words. But it is something I have seen. And it is something that is very true. It can be because you're chronically self-abandoning. Not meeting your own needs. Not showing up for yourself. Okay, those are linked. This can lead to 
Again, toxic relationships because you have to do all these mental gymnastics to justify them. Staying in a toxic job, not following your heart. If you're like, oh, I don't even know how to do that. You probably have a pattern of self-abandonment. Okay. It, it's as simple as it sounds. It's not easy, but it is as simple as it sounds. You just listen to what your body and your heart is saying. But you have to be still enough to do it and you have to show up for yourself to do it. You have to literally sit with yourself. It looks like never getting the life that you want. Okay, if you are making decisions and they're not rooted in your own self-knowledge, you very often can make decisions that are not right for you because you're going to make the logical quote unquote decision. But we don't always, the logical decision is not always the right decision. So we need to make decisions that are based in our own self-knowledge. Self-abandonment leads to people-pleasing. It leads to hella people-pleasing. They are Self-abandonment is one of the hallmarks of people-pleasers because you are chronically ignoring yourself in order to meet other people's needs. I am going to say it until it gets rooted into your noggin. You abandon yourself because you're afraid people are going to leave you. That is not a healthy relationship. That is a relationship. And I don't want you to have a relationship. I want you to have a wonderful relationship. That is what you deserve. So self-abandonment is a symptom of people-pleasing and it can lead to people-pleasing. It can lead to saying yes when you want to say no. It can lead to staying in relationships that you don't even like because you're obsessed with people liking you. Again, my course will walk you step-by-step step through healing that. LiveMyHappyHealth.com slash Becoming Light. It is literally there for you. I've made it super affordable. But if it's not for you, okay, great. That's also fine. <laughs> like That's okay. It causes you to hide parts of yourself and do anything to prevent being criticized. So it's also a big part of perfectionism. So if you're like, <laughs> damn, Amanda, I feel seen. Yeah, I know because I know you. If you are a perfectionist, you are self-abandoning. You are not doing what's best for you because you're afraid if you're not perfect, people won't like you. You have to be so beyond reproach to make up for the fact that it's you. And so you deny your needs and you work yourself too hard and you avoid doing the work because it's uncomfortable and you're afraid of rejection. And this, again, is going to cause depression. You're basing your worth on something you can't control. That's not okay. It causes anxiety. Think about how freaking anxiety-inducing it is to be a perfectionist. Okay? I give up perfectionism a long time ago. I can't tell you the number of things I half-ass. Like, everything that's not facing a client. This podcast Okay, I show up 100% here, but I don't do crazy editing. I don't expect the episodes to be perfect. If you hear my cat, you hear my cat. Okay, I finally got a snazzy backdrop if you're watching on the YouTubes, but it's built out of PVC pipes and some fabric that I had at the house. My lighting isn't perfect. My makeup isn't perfect. So that I can deliver what I care about, which is quality content. Okay, we can learn to half-ass things. That's one of the ways that we show up for ourselves because we're realistic about where we can put our energy and our time and our focus. So again, perfectionism is also going to cause low self-worth and low self-esteem because you're never, ever, ever going to hit perfect. You are going to not take care of your needs in order to look quote unquote perfect, but you're never going to hit it. So what happens if you set a goal that you're never going to hit? It's really, really demoralizing. It's really demoralizing. You're never going to feel good about that. I have a painting, well, a print of a painting um, in on my vision board. If you guys don't do a vision board, I'll do an episode about it probably at the end of this year because they're very cool, uh, but that's when we're there. 
that says the pursuit of perfection is the pursuit of death. It's not real. You're never going to hit it. Okay. So show up for yourself. Do what you need to do and let's move on. The last thing that self-abandonment can look like, and there's probably more. So if you think of another one, shoot me a message um, at Amanda underscore chills on Instagram. It looks like swallowing your feelings and not speaking up. So not showing up for yourself permeates so many aspects of your life. In work, you're probably not asking for a raise. Okay, I can't tell you how many of my clients I coach through negotiating a raise. I had one client get paid $4,000 more a year simply because they asked. They asked. They weren't going to ask because they don't show up for themselves, because they don't meet their needs. I have had clients leave jobs and get paid significantly more money because they started showing up for themselves. We started healing that self-abandonment wound, which is ideal. We want you to heal that wound so you show up for yourself, so you get what you need and what you want. Because if you can't get what you need, what you want is too fucking far away, right? It's like if you don't have your basics right, we can't do the fancy things. So we need to get what you need and then we can get what you want. But if we swallow our feelings, if we don't speak up, that is that is hallmark self-abandonment. Hallmark self-abandonment. Oh, it's my job to keep the peace. Whose peace? Not yours. Oh, as long as everyone else is happy, I'm happy. Liar. Liar. Because you're not happy. I know you're not happy because I've worked with hundreds of people like you. We want to speak up. We want to speak out. You have a voice. Perhaps you've never been allowed to use it. Perhaps you've never been taught to use it. But I promise you, you have one. And I promise you there are people either in your life or we can get people in your life who want to hear you when you speak up, who want to love you in the way that you need to be loved. But if we're not telling people, they don't know. Okay, that's a problem. This, again, can cause depression. Why? Because now your relationships suck. (laughs) Now you're always swallowing your peace. You're always at war with yourself so other people can keep the peace. That is self-abandonment at its fucking core. It causes anxiety because now you've made yourself responsible for everybody else's happiness. You're not. That is a completely unrealistic goal. So let me get back to low self-worth and low self-esteem. You've made your happiness dependent on something you cannot control. But I can make other people happy. No, you can't. No, you cannot. I need you to set that belief on fire and watch it die. No, you cannot make other people happy. You can contribute to their happiness. But you cannot make people happy. It leads to your needs never getting met. Why? Because you're never asking for them to be met. You're never advocating for yourself. That is a huge problem. So that can look like if you need extra time on a deadline. It can look like being honest about what to charge for your services. It can look like taking time off. It can look like taking a break from a relationship or saying, hey, I, you know, I just need a day to myself. Um, I was teaching a group of firefighters this week about hypervigilance. And one of the ways that we talked about advocating for themselves is when they come home from a shift, they work 24 hours, have a pretty stressful job, right, <laughs> is telling their partners, hey, sweet, lovely darling of mine, um, I need 10 or 15 minutes to just decompress and then I'm going to come back out and join you. And they were like, well, I don't know about that. And I said, well, what's the cost of not doing it? And they said, well, I'm irritated all day. And I said, yeah, I know. That's a problem. So we can ask for 10 minutes or we can be irritated literally all day. Which one of those seems easier? Now you may be like, oh no, being irritated sounds easier, but it's not because you're denying the consequences of that. It's much easier to just say, hey, I need 10 minutes. And I'm like, I promise you, your partner is going to respond well. But we don't want to swallow our feelings and not speak up. We don't want to keep the peace, quote unquote. 
when you are sacrificing your own. That's not actually keeping the peace. That's self-abandoning. So all of these things are self-abandonment. And they have a lot, a lot, a lot of consequences. A lot of consequences. And they are 100% healable. You can absolutely overcome them. There is a step-by-step process. I don't have the whole, I don't have time to get into it in a podcast episode. But if you wanted to start, the boundaries episode is good. Um, But it's not the whole picture. So quite literally the whole picture is through the course. And I (laughs) I don't want you to be like, she just did this episode so she can sell the course. Kind of, right? The podcast, I do use it as marketing for my business. But I literally don't have time. The course content is a few hours and multiple resources. So it just takes a lot more time and education to walk you through this. Um, If this resonates with you, please check out the course. You don't have to buy it. I hope if it's the right fit for you that you do. That's one of the ways that you can show up for yourself. And if it's not the right fit, that's totally okay. I've got other podcast episodes that you can look into. Retraining your beliefs, setting boundaries. I think that one is called setting boundaries like your life depends on it. Those are good places to start, but they're not going to give you the whole picture. Um, So if this resonates with you, I hope that you can meet yourself with compassion. I hope that you really hear me when I tell you that you deserve someone to show up for you and you deserve for that person to be you. You deserve to be happy, but you are never, ever, ever going to get it if you keep sacrificing your happiness in order to try to make other people happy. Because again, you have no control over that. And if you want the website for the course, it is livemyhappyhealth.com slash becoming light. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, Good luck. Love you. I hope you show up for yourself and I hope you do like one thing today. It doesn't have to be huge, right? You can do one thing for yourself today that future you is going to thank you for. We can start there. One thing is plenty of things to start with. Okay, be good.